Okay, I connected up the um, uh, FTDI, FTDI thingamajig and you'll probably have to use some female to female um, jumper wires to do this if you got one of the same type of um, adapter thingies that I got here and just remember that ground goes to ground, VCC goes to VCC, those are pretty obvious RX and TX go to the opposite one, so the RX on this goes to the TX on the Arduino and then <coughs> you also need one more wire to reset the Arduino properly when you want to load the program on and I found that this can change a little bit depending on what model of um, FTDI adapter thing you have but this particular one the yellow wire there is going from DTR to on here we have GRN the far right side I don't really know what that stands for um, and I not really sure what DTR stands for either, but um, that's why I'm hooking it up and that's the way it seems to be working. So over here on um, in the Arduino sketch it's very very simple. All we're doing is reading in four analog values and we are just printing them out to the serial just to check that the sticks are giving us the kind of information that we expect. So if I Uh, just bring this over here. Okay, now I'll see if I can get this on the screen properly. So you should see that when you move your joysticks, at the moment I'm moving, moving the pitch and roll joystick. So you should see the values changing like that. And when you let it go, you should have <coughs> should have something around 512. Uh, this is not really. 512 so I might have to do some adjusting in software to get that to be centered better um, and over here we have throttle and yaw uh, they are backwards at the moment so when I put the throttle right down to the bottom it goes up to 1023 and vice versa but those are pretty easy to change um, I prefer to change them in the Arduino program but if they are both backwards, you can actually just reverse the red and the black on here, um, and that will give you different uh, the different direction on there. So that's what you should expect to see when your joysticks are hooked up correctly and giving you the right information. Um, now I'm going to hook up the everything else and check that the radio is transmitting properly. I actually have a little thingy that I made um, to do this, which has become very ha <laughs> handy. I use it for a lot of things. Um, I wouldn't expect you to make one up, but uh, I'll just show you how how I can get it working here. And um, I guess if you if you don't want to make up your own tester thing like that, you'll just have to wait until the next video when we look at uh, connecting the radio on the other side at the receiving end. Oh yeah, one thing I should also mention about these particular joysticks is they have a very large dead zone in the middle and also quite a large dead zone at the outsides and that's going to be quite a problem to be honest. Um, it could be a, a very very big problem that makes them actually unusable but I have to try it to find out. Um, and so what I mean by that is that um, you can see if you look at the leftmost uh, column there, the throttle. When I put this right down to the bottom, we get well. Let's let's start from the top. Right at the top, we get zero. And as I slowly bring it down, nothing changes for a while, and then it jumps up pretty quickly. And then as we approach the center. It sort of sticks on 512 right in the middle and it stays there even though I'm moving it a little bit. So I can move it around and it doesn't change because it's sort of sticking in the middle at 512. And I have to move it a fair distance away from the middle before it goes away from the 512 position and then it jumps up 
quite quickly to about 600. And then as I move it down a little bit more, we hit 1023 quite early. So I haven't, I'm not anywhere near the full range of movement. So that I have another sort of 15 degrees or so to move. But all of this range here is 1023. So um, I think it's going to be quite challenging to fly using these joysticks. Uh, for throttle at least. For the other ones it's not so bad. But definitely for throttle I would really want to have something better than these joysticks. But I'll give them a try and see how it goes. If it fails, well you'll know that these are not a good idea to use. Alright, I've connected up the rest of the wiring. Uh, at the moment I'm just running the radio module from 3.3 volts coming from the Arduino's regulator. Um, just to show you that it works, uh, but it's not a, a very good long-term solution. So um, let's just have a look at the sketch for the Arduino for a second. It's not too much more than what we just had. Uh, we have now the data structure that we want to send. So at the moment we just have four bytes, one for each of the four axes of our controller. And we have an instance of that. And then when we begin, we do a few things here to set up the radio module. Uh, one of which is to set it to the slower data rate. Uh, that helps to get better range. And at the moment, <clears throat> well, for the rest of this project actually, we'll be setting auto acknowledgements to false. So the transmitter is never going to wait for anything to come back from the quadcopter. It's just going to send, send, send. So that'll give us as fast as possible a data rate as we can get. Um, so yeah, so in the loop, basically we do the same thing we were just doing. We do analog read. And because we need to convert that to a byte, uh, we need to convert it between uh, we need to convert it from a 0 to 1023 range down to a 0 to 255 range. Uh, so that's what that map function does for us. And then we set that into the data structure like, like this. So that becomes one of the members of that data structure. And then we just set, send that data structure here as one, um, one lump of data. So that's about it really. And you can see over here, I'm receiving about 18 packets per second. And when I move my control sticks, you can see, oh, you probably can't see, let's do this. So you can see that I'm moving the stick and getting some data. And now you can see what I mean about that huge dead zone in the middle. So even uh, even though I'm moving the control stick smoothly across, see how it sticks in the middle there? Oh, oops. Might have bumped something on there, I think. Yeah, uh, I'm going to put a, a, another board on the back of this with some um, spaces to stop it, stop that from happening. So I'll try not to press on it so hard this time. But it's a little bit hard to demonstrate, especially on camera like this. But uh, so I'm moving, I'm moving the yaw left to right as slowly and smoothly as I can, but it sticks in the middle quite a lot. So that's what I mean by dead zone, and it's not very good for uh, the purposes of flying radio-controlled aircraft, unfortunately, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so, obviously you probably don't have one of these handy little things to check with, so what you can do 
just to quickly check that the radio module is being detected properly. Um, you can add a few little things and I will just go over them. It's just a few lines. We can include printf.h and that's this other tab here. So we're just going to include that. And then at the beginning of our setup, we're going to do serial begin being like this. And then we're going to do printf begin, which is a function in here, which just sets up a little hook to uh, print for us. And then <clears throat> after we've done the setup for the radio, we can do radio print details. Now, if I upload that now, just give it a second. Okay, now when I open my serial monitor, I can see some information about what the radio module um, has been set up as. So the important things to check here are that this pipe out address that we specified has been used, has been like obeyed. So the setting has taken effect. Um, so that will be an RX address. And um, the other one that we can check is that the data rate has been set to 250 kilobits per second um, the default is one megabit per second. So basically just check those two things and you'll be able to see that the radio module has, uh, is listening to what you're telling it to do. So even if you can't check visually with something like this, um, for the time being, just check that those two, uh, bits of data have been set. So this is what the transmitter will look like in its final form. Uh, disconnected from the computer now of course and running off battery power. Um, I had a problem with the I think it was a power issue in that when I connected the antenna the extra power draw through powering the antenna I think um, gave me some problems with intermittent transmission so the radio wasn't work working too great. You can see at the moment I'm getting around about 17 to 18 packets per second, although that is, of course, limited by the refresh rate of the screen at the moment. Uh, that was going down to zero in some cases after I connected the antenna onto the radio module there. Um, so I had to make a little bit, a little change in my power connections, just a couple of leads I had to shift positions. Uh, so I'll explain what I did there. Okay, here's the diagram that we had, were looking at before. I've only included the positive connections here just for clarity. Uh, so we're taking power f for the Arduino directly from the battery and we're taking power for the radio from the step-down converter to give us 3.3 .3 volts. Now, I think the problem is that <coughs> the power, the voltage coming out of here is a little bit noisy, so it's um, not very steady, and that causes disruptions for the radio because it's uh, kind of fussy, this one. So what I've decided to do, and what I have been doing for months with my other transmitter without any problems, is instead of powering the radio from the step-down converter directly, Oops. Uh, so we take that one off. I'm going to use the 3.3 volt regulated output from the Arduino, which gives a much, much smoother power output. At least that's what I think is happening, because whenever I use that, it works really nicely. Uh, so the problem is then that the output from here is fairly limited from the Arduino. You can only use up to 200 milliamps total for everything. So remember we're putting a little bit of uh, current 
through these ones to read the um, the joysticks. So we're probably pushing pushing the limits of what we can do there. So <clears throat> what I've decided to do is instead of powering, instead of taking in six to nine volts through the raw pin and having the onboard regulator step that down through what could be a six volt drop to get to three volts. I'm going to instead power the Arduino from the regulator. So we'll have 3.3 volts coming out here and going in here. And then we'll have 3.3 volts coming out here and going in here. So it might seem a little bit pointless, but it, it works and it gives a lot smoother power at least that's that's what I think the issue is um, and I have read that on the internet a fair bit um, now the other way that you could avoid this problem is by putting a 100 nanofarad to 10 microfarad capacitor across here and here um, and I have one of those around but I didn't want to put that in as part of my build video because it's just another thing to buy and another thing to solder and um, you, you probably don't have one so um, I thought I'd just leave it out <clears throat> so this is how I'm gonna gonna do it it's gonna come in the ear like that and around around and around and um, yeah that's working quite well at the moment so that's it for the transmitter um, Thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.